Good morning, my friends and followers. I remain Edward Wasserum. This morning, we are going to be looking at the Johansen approach. The idea of co-integration was first conceived and documented by Robert Engel and Clive Gringer in 1987, uh, after which uh, Soren Johnson established the Johansen approach in 1996. And the Johansen test helps to determine if three or more time series data are co-integrated or will converge in the long run. And the essence of the Johansen approach is a modification of the Engelgranger procedure, which limits uh, that, that scholars to a two a variable estimation, which is also known as a single equation model. So the Johansen approach is a more sophisticated or an advanced version of the Engelgranger procedure. And in Johansen uh, pro uh, process, we have two statisticals or two approaches or two two means uh, through which uh, decisions to the presence or otherwise of co-integrating relationship will actually be ascertained or be decided on. And these decisions are based on the three statistics and the math against statistics. So these two statisticals are critical in deciding the presence or absence of co-integrating relationship in, in, the, in any particular model. And the Johansen approach is based on the null hypothesis of there is no level relationship among the variable under consideration. Against the alternative hypothesis that there is a level relationship among the variable under considerations. So, given that uh, there are also some assumptions or some preconditions or some characteristics or features that about that time a particular time series data we have before it will actually be considered uh, for, for Johansen approach. So, the time series data you are going to be using for your study must have some characteristics or features. And the first feature of the time series data is that the data must be stationary after first referencing, which means that the data will not revert to its mean. The secondly, all time series data in, in, in Johansen approach are all indigenous. And thirdly, the data you are going to be using in Johansen approach must be imputed in their raw form. And lastly, the lag length of the model must actually be known before you proceed for a Johansen uh, co-integrating uh, uh, test. So these are the four basic conditions that your data set must have before you will not decide that you are going to perform a Johansen uh, approach. But the first of it all is the first assumption or the first condition. The time series data must be stationary after phase difference, all of them in total. So once these conditions are being met, you are now you are now qualified to perform the Johansen approach. It's a Johansen approach is not limited to only three data. You may have seven, you may have eight time series data in your model, provided that all the time series data became stationary after phase differencing, then Johansen approach is the best approach for the study. So given this, let's uh, go to EView for a practical section because we are going to be adopting a study approach this morning wherein we are going to look at the impact of uh, uh, capital market variables or stock market variables rather on, uh, you, on, the, on the external sector or external reserve in, in Nigeria. So looking at Sorry, sorry uh, macroeconomic variables and external reserve in Nigeria rather. So the impact of micro macroeconomic variables and external reserve in Nigeria will actually be unveiled this morning. But before we do that, due to time constraint, I may not be able to, to look at the unit two text of these variables one after the other, but I have done it in my previous uh, video. The unit two text or balance of payment of all the macroeconomic variables I'm going to be using this morning, they became stationary after first differencing and my data sample or range uh, is from 1981 to 2020. This uh, data uh, was sourced from the Central Bank of Nigeria Statistical Bulletin uh, of various years anyway. So basically this is what we were doing this morning. But the first thing to be done this morning is to actually uh, ascertain the, the lag length for this particular model because without the lag length it will not be fine to actually perform the Johansen approach. So the first thing to do is to check the lag length, having identified that the first condition is uh, validated. All the time series data became stationary after first difference. You go to quick, if you go to quick, a uh, maneuver to estimate var, a maneuver to estimate var, then you input your, <coughs> input your variables, input all your variables, starting with the dependent variable. My dependent variable, is external reserve so I will now type in log external reserve 
अवनाश आईपी नेशनल रिजर्व जे ईएक्स ईएक्स जीआर माय ऑर्डर वेरिएबल्स आ जी DPPC we also have a balance of payment we also have a, we have exchange rate in the model and I added foreign direct investment in flow without changing anything here without changing anything here without changing anything here because the reason why I allow them at a log level because the Johansson but at a normal or roll level because the Johansson process I don't really know want it to be locked uh, if you if you click the OK button, you will be exposed to VIX, and if you move over here, you will get the auto regre uh, regression estimate. But this is not what we are going to. We we'll move on to view in this particular var result. If you move on to view in this var result. You move on to lag structure. For lag structure, you maneuver to lag length criterion. For lag length criterion, you go to lag specification, and you click OK without changing anything. Then you will be exposed to this. This is the result. This is the lag selection uh, criterion results. So once you're able to ascertain that this is your lag selection result, you actually take decision. Uh, in my next video, I will explain further about this uh, lag selection. So in this particular study, our appropriate lag is lag length one. Since our lag is lag length one, uh, I will now move on and proceed and proceed to actually perform the Johansson process. So I will now go to quick and maneuver to group statistics. Johansson process is either <coughs> moved or gotten from the group statistics because uh, you can perform Johansson without actually looking at the group of, uh, uh, of time series data you are using for the study. There is now maneuver to the Johansson co-integration text. The unlike what we did before, we will now input the variables in in their raw form, the variables in their raw form. I, I like I have it here already, and copy them from my lag selection box. Uh, I move on to to this area. I paste it. They are it's the same thing. I already have it in my lag selection box. I move on to this area. I paste it. If I click OK, this uh, Johansson co-integration test box will open. Already my lag length is one. I always leave it in default. There are too many deterministic in Johansson procedure, but in my further classes, I will expose and look at the, this deterministic one after the other. If I hit OK without changing anything in this box, I will now be exposed to something that looks like this. Something that looks like this. This is the Johansson text. This is how the Johansson co integrating output looks like. If you look at the Johansson text, we can now offer interpretation to this test and actually proceed from here but i will need to copy it and paste in my <coughs> microsoft word for proper interpretation this is my microsoft word this is my microsoft word box and i'm pasting the johansen results to enable me offer appropriate interpretation to the two statisticals i mentioned previously then this is my <coughs> result this result was estimated today the seventh day <coughs> and at time seven 26 sample size after adjustment 1983 to 2019 i still have 37 years observation this is lovely and it's a linear deterministic trend yes and uh, the unrestricted contribution rank we have the two results <coughs> these two results are also actually not the same they are in two phase the first phase this is the trace uh, the trace statistics results then the second phase will combine the first phase which is the mark uh, max edging statistics result. Most of the time, the max edging statistics results and the trace statistics result will not have the same, uh, the same uh, cause conclusion. Whenever time there is discrepancy or uh, divergent view between the max statistics result and the trace, uh, and uh, uh, sorry, between the <coughs> the max edging statistics and the trace, uh, <coughs> the trace statistics, the trace statistics takes permanence over the max edging statistics. That is how it is being. Uh, 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 looked into. So to infer or to conclude that there is or there is no co-integrating relationship among this, uh, <coughs> these two uh, these two estimation procedure under the Johansson uh, rank test, we need to actually look at here. Under here, there is a summary of this whole uh, statisticals. 
The summary states that three statistics or three tests indicate no cointegrating relationship at 5% level. And if you are doubtful of that, we we'll also have uh, the hypothesis here. We have five hypotheses, non hypothesis one, hypothesis two, hypothesis three, hypothesis four, and hypothesis five. These are the statisticals of this hypothesis. These are the values for three statistics. These are the values for critical value. And how do we determine uh, if there is no cointegration? You determine if there is no cointegration when you compare this particular three statistics with uh, this uh, critical value at 5%. Whenever this three statistics is higher than the critical value, there is cointegration. Vice, whenever this uh, three statistics is lower than the critical value, there is no cointegration. And given what we have here, all these three statistics explained or presented here are all lower than their corresponding critical values at 5%. And also the p-values of these particular statistics are not significant, which actually means that there is no co-integrating relationship or there is no convergence or there will be no convergence among these time series variables in the long run. And given the absence of uh, co-integrating relationship among these uh, time series, we will now proceed to actually check the mass against statistics if mass against statistics is saying the same thing. So when you come down this way, this is the mass against statistica and the same condition also holds in the mass against statistica all the statisticals here are not greater than the critical values at 5%. That means that there is no co-integrating relationship. You also look at this particular probability value, the p-values are all more than 5%, which implies that there is no co-integrating relationship among the stock market, by, sorry, mac, uh, macroeconomic variables and the scenario reserve in Nigeria. And also, if you want to actually look at the summary here, mass again values, test indicates no co-integrating relationship at 5% level. Hence, we conclude that in the model or in, the, in, in, in this particular research work, there is no co-integrating relationship amongst the, 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 the time series that are used uh, in the study. And uh, in this kind of condition, the appropriate method or approach that the researcher will need to adopt uh, because it is a problem case, the researcher will need to proceed to estimate uh, vector autoregression, which is VAR. The VAR approach uh, requires that uh, all the time series variables are endogenous and the contemporaneous relationship among them is such that uh, it is expected that there is an issue that will actually need to be unraveled. So this is how we interpret uh, this is how we interpret the Johansson approach. In my next video, I will teach you how to use uh, a component of the Johansson result, which we call the normalized co-integration test, to actually interpret as a long-run result of an estimation. So the normalized co-integration test by next um, in my next class will actually be interpreted appropriately as a long-run result. I'll teach you how you can use it to supplement for a long-run result. So, brother, in my next video, I will look at that, at, uh, at that, but this is how you have to uh, estimate and interpret the Johansson uh, co-integrating uh, relationship amongst uh, your, your time series data, and hence we conclude that in this estimation, or in the estimation, of macroeconomic variables and external reserve in Nigeria, there is no co-integrating relationship and because there is no co-integrating relationship, the researcher will proceed to use VAR or structural VAR for his or her estimation. Please stay tuned in my next class. I will expose further on issue of co-integration and uh, long-run relationship using the normalized co-integration test. God bless you and thank you very much.